Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and today we are going to be discussing a little review, first impressions were set up, of the HSGI IFAC Individual First Aid Kit. This is the Blowout Bleeder, I suppose the technical name is, and when you purchase this, it doesn't come with anything inside it. It doesn't come with anything else on it either, I've added most of these things. It comes with simply the pouch here, and these fancy little tabs, they have a little hole down here in the bottom, he's got slide that through here, there's a little another hole that goes through, and you have to kind of can only remove it by twisting and then pulling, so it's its own unique setup. I haven't seen these tabs before and they're called High Speed Gear HSG Clip, made in the USA. So, fantastic place that uh, USA is if you've never been. And of course you got a little tag here for your HSGI logo, logo. and it also says again, made in the USA, so no mistakes there. So. Interesting, what's unique about this is, is a very, ah, if I could talk today, is a very small pouch. And it comes with these little side molly bits. And I thought these were unique because you can actually fit a um, North American Rescue tourniquet pouch, which is also now issued to Marines nowadays. A little high visible tourniquet, highly visible in the IR sense if you're wearing nods or something crazy. So you can find in the dark. And you keep your tourniquet in there. Fun fact, keep the tourniquet facing inboards to avoid to keep it from basically bowing out and looking funky. So if it's nice and flush with your tourniquet pouch and it has an added in little scissors, scissors pouch. So this actually has a little slot in here. Slide your fancy cutting rescue scissors and clip them in place. So if you need them, pull this tab, pop them free and boom, you've got your scissors ready to cut through all manner of material so that you can save a life maybe even your own life, or maybe someone else, if you're incapacitated, can get to your IFAC and save your life for you, depending on the critical nature or how bad the injury is. So put that back in there so that's it's nice and comfy. Now when you pop this tab here, it pops open like so. There's some uh, Velcro up here and a Velcro option down here. So if you want to add the clip on top of it, that's fine. You can fold this pull tab here, cover that. If you want to, if you're carrying extra and you don't want it to fall on the sides or anything, that is an option. So when you grab this tab here, it is basically going to dump your contents onto the floor, which is kind of cool because if you need access to your, because so generally your IFAC, you're going to keep it on the strong side of your body because you're not going to be removing your hand from your weapon too often, or at least you probably shouldn't be. So it's going to sit right about here. So in the event you get injured, you get shot in the shoulder, you get shot in the arm or something, you can quickly pop this open with either hand and with either hand grab this tab here real quick and basically just dump your contents on the floor. Now, oh, let's make sure you've got your good look at this because once I dump it, it's going to be a pain to put back in. Well, not too bad. I mean, it's not that many items. There you go. Whoa! Dump your stuff on the floor, you get down and you get what you need as quickly as possible. So, as you can see, this pull-out tab goes here, so you basically t stack all the items on top of that, and you've got a bit of space to work with. Not a lot. In fact, if I had to wager a guess here, you can technically, well, you can't even fit, so you can almost fit two mags in here, so you can get about a mag and a half worth of stuff is what I'm trying to get around to. So it is a very small minimalist pouch, as you can see. So interesting, very interesting. And if you haven't dealt with IFAX before, this might not seem all that important to you. Although an IFAX is a very important life-saving piece of gear. And with this, if you're wondering what I have in here, by the way, Generally, I have the tourniquet on the side, so if you take an external wound to the arm or the leg or something, you can throw that on there, cinch it down, and stop the bleeding. If it's not too bad, you can generally, you'll have your quick clot gauze. And I think they're making uh, better versions. They keep improving upon it to make it less burny and more effective. This is the sponge type, which I had never seen before, but now they have a sponge type. This is the actual gauze, and prior to that, you just had the powder. Problem with the powder is people would pop it open, pour way too much in, and it would do more 
well, not more harm than good, because you're not dead, but it would do a lot of damage. So they start making this uh, gauze type, and you could pack the gauze in there. It has a more pre-measured amount of uh, quick clot in there, and I guess the sponge does is more effective in getting only as much quick clot in there as you need, and the rest stays in the sponge. And they also make some other non-quick clot material that apparently doesn't even need to be rinsed out, so... Technology! But yeah, this is kind of important, because you don't want to die. And I've got two normal triangular bandages and a bit of gauze. So, you can put whatever you want in there. You're not gonna be able to fit in much. This is pretty much packed to the brim with just this handful of equipment, so it's minimalist. You're gonna carry exactly what you need. Now, for the purpose of this video, I have two other IFACs I've used. There's the issued Marine Corps IFAC. Now, the thing is, you're trying to take up minimal space and have exactly what you need. This has more than enough, and it also kind of bulks up here, so it gets in the way of your arm a bit. It's a massive pouch that sits on the side of your plate carrier. But if you pop this open, which only has the tab here, if you've never used one of these before, you've got two bags. One is your sort of general daily equipment, and then there's your trauma kit. This is the, oh, I've been shot, I need to pop this open. It has a little mini tourniquet, not mini tourniquet, a simple tourniquet. A bunch of uh, bandages, some gauze rolls, uh, hemostatic treatment wound packing. So, I so quick clot is all packed inside a little green bag. And then in here, you got your more general stuff: water purification, some basic non-sterile bandages, your Merichrome for keeping uh, small cuts and stuff disinfected because it's iodine, and then some band-aids and other daily stuff. So this. I'm not saying you shouldn't carry band-aids and merichrome and the small water purification tablets. What I am going to say, as my tangent here, is that you should carry those in a separate pack. So you get like a small little plastic baggie, keep your merichrome band-aids and all your extra stuff in there. Because if you have, it's gonna happen, you're gonna get small cuts and nicks and bruises and other nonsense throughout just the normal course of daily operations. And they don't require you to bust open your trauma kit to save your life. They're more of an inconvenience that you don't want to get infected because it'll affect mission, it'll impact mission effectiveness later down the line. So good to have, but not in the immediate thing. You can just keep that in a Ziploc baggie. You can keep it in a cargo pocket. You can keep it with your shoulder zippers. Just somewhere out of the way for on downtime when nothing else is going on, you can treat smaller wounds. But yeah, so this was basically considered as the adage goes, the larger your IFAC, odds are the less you know what you're doing, the less you know about what you need. So this has a lot of stuff in it, arguably too much stuff, although it can be picked up pretty cheap and it's nice, I guess, but the more you learn, mind you, this is just hardware. You gotta get that software in the brain because if you don't know how to use the hardware, you're still gonna die. Unless someone who knows who did who did their homework is around there, and you're like, I don't, burr, 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 burr. and then they go, okay, pop this open, cut this sleeve, get this bleeding stop, quick clot. I don't know, bleeding will stop, tourniquet. Okay, good, you're gonna live. So, issued Marine Corps IFAC for demonstration purposes. Now the next IFAC I had actually got is made by Spec Ops, little Spec Ops. This one's a bit taller. And they do make different types. It's got the little laser cutout, leather-ish thing. The little clips. This one does the similar clip and velcro option. And it holds a fair deal of stuff. This one's three wide, whereas the HSGI bleeder down here is only two wide. So, a smaller, more compact iPad. As you can see, this one takes up less room, or less space, and holds a bit of stuff. However, mind you, with both this and that one, there is no side cat tea tourniquet holder, which is why that one has the soft tourniquet in it. Soft tourniquet is okay, but you're going to be hard pressed for time every time you need a tourniquet. You never want to have to use a tourniquet, but if you need one, you have, I think, arguably between 5 to 10 seconds, most say, before the blood loss will start affecting consciousness and motor skills. If you can't get your arm to do what you need your arm to do, then you're not going to stop it and you're going to... Yeah, so buddy rescue but if you can do self rescue all the better so if you can get your own tourniquet on there because either you're bleeding profusely or a whole portion of your arm could be gone it's not a good time 
whenever you need your IFAC, you're not having a good day. So, but to keep you alive, which is important, you're going to want to have one. So those are the first two I had. Now back to the bleeder. We're basically going to stuff everything in here. Now, I'm not a medical expert. I've read a few things and I've learned a bit here and there. But yeah, basically, I think you're going to want your stuff in there. And you're just going to poke it back in there. So these sit up here. And a little extra bandage, rolly bandage goes up in the front. That's all fit better. There you go. You don't have to pack it just a wee bit to get to fit. But yeah, it fits really nicely. And keep your little tab at the ready. Because you never know when you're going to need it. Although you hope you never do. And secure it. Seal it on down. And if you want to put anything on this extra side here, then by all means you can. I mean, you still got Molly on your plate carrier. But yeah, then we're just going to lodge this in here. And boom. Which how far back do I want this? Do I want two or one? I'm going to put it back one extra space to make up for the tourniquet, which I could just mount onto the plate carrier, but I do kind of like the uh, the way it fits forward and everything. It looks good right there, so I'm going to mount it right there. It's going to look nice, and I know I pre predominantly am doing an airsoft channel, but IFAC, it's an important thing to have, and even if you're just doing airsoft for your own little cosplay look the roll thing, the more you know the better you can do. So this is actually even a relatively inexpensive little pouch. I think it's like between 20 and 30 bucks. So inexpensive, very low profile, doesn't take up a lot of space, which means by taking up less space, you have plenty of room and weight for ammunition. So the majority of the injuries, I think 85% of preventable battlefield death is from bleeding. So getting shot in the arm, tourniquet, and then quick clot. Especially quick clot for like shoulder injuries where you can't bet tourniquet. If you're still bleeding profusely, then you want to quick clot that particularly. So, or up on the thighs, groin regions, stuff like that, where you're going to really want to have your quick clot ready. So, stop the bleeding and yeah, start the breathing. Outside of that, you know, you've got your bandages to wrap everything else up, keep it nice, clean, and organized. So, and then the other, my main other injury you're probably going to get would be like the hemonumiothorax, the pneumothorax, or the hemothorax. This is basically where your cavity that you use to expand your diaphragm so you can breathe <gasps> gets injured and fills up with either air, hemothorax, or blood. The blood's hemothorax, air is the pneumothorax. So, at which point, if you don't have the one way chest catheter, you're going to want to take a piece of plastic, which there's plenty on the bandages. You want to slap that in there, tape it in place. So carrying a small, just a little bit of duct tape, not a bad idea. And that will keep you at least able to breathe to an extent. The one way catheter would be able to drain it so you'd be able to keep breathing, but painful, painful stuff. It's, it, it may not have as much of an impact on the bleeding part, but it does impact the breathing part. If you can't breathe, you're not getting air and you're going to die. So things to know. So hopefully you never need to use one of these, but if you do, you want it stocked and ready to go. And train. It's not a lot of expensive stuff in here. You can get quick clot, well, you don't need the quick clot for the training part too much, but you definitely want the bandages so you can put those on, wrap them and stuff, and have a trainer tourniquet that you can wrap and get going in under 10, five seconds. The sooner the better. And train with those, train with those often. Hopefully they never need it, but if you do, you'll have it. And if someone else needs it, you can take care of them too. So that's my video for the IFAC, the HSGI IFAC. Very minimalist, and I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it. And hopefully I'll never need it, but if I do, there'll be a second video and I'll probably be a lot more messed up, but happy I bought one. So cheers everyone, hope you enjoyed this review. I know a lot of people are very, very defensive about how they take care of their IFACs. So, yeah, people will give you different types of advice. So, the more you can learn, particularly the more you can get out of combat veterans and everything, then the better off you'll be. So, cheers everyone, stay chivalrous, and I'll see you in the next video.